Welcome back to another episode of Alternative Space History, and you read that correctly. This is the year we build rocket planes. I will never do that again. Anyways, we're just going to start off with doing a sounding rocket contract that we were pretty much... We built this last year. We just had to kind of get it rolled out to the pad. So that's where we're going to start the video off, because I've seen these Draco 3 series in action before. So there's not really a whole lot to talk about. Uh, this is just an altitude contract. We're just shooting a payload up, and then we're going to let it come down and blow up. In fact, it blew up so hard, it cracked, it freaked my screen out and crashed it. Just right there, as you saw. Anyways, we're going to go hop back over to the VAB and get ready to build ourselves our very first rocket plane. Now, we're going to be grabbing the first artificial satellite contract here shortly. Um, we can't do the scientific one until we unlock this Geiger counter right here. So I'm probably going to wait a little bit to do that. But we are going to grab a couple of these contracts. Because um, we're going to be getting into X-Planes. Now, because of how the, uh, the time limits on the contracts work, and the way they work, I, I'm going to pr pretty much probably shoot the first artificial satellite and then follow it up with the scientific satellite. And maybe, if possible, even make that second launch a, a two-part contract and add, like, a, I don't know, first solar-powered or first polar. I haven't decided yet. Anyways, we are here in the space plane hangar designing our very first airplane. Now, if you want to know how to build airplanes... This is not the channel to watch, because this is my first time attempting to do this. Now, I would recommend watching Calvin McLeod, which I hope I'm not saying that wrong. If I am, I'm super sorry. I'm going to link him in the description below. I've been watching his videos at full speed, and then the build parts at half speed. Not only is the guy super knowledgeable about it, he is fantastic at building these things way better than I am but the one thing I can tell you something that I learned from him was use bearing pieces for your body structure it makes it a lot lighter you get a little bit more control of how you do it, it costs a lot less the tool and it kind of gives you the ability to uh, to put the weight where you want it in the craft which you'll kind of see me adjust that here shortly now Next year, I am going to make some changes to some of these planes. Uh, it was mostly because I was misunderstanding how he did something. So I, when I put the engine in the tank in, I do it uh, a weird way. And later I find out uh, how... He explained to me how he does it, which makes a lot of sense. But one of the things you're going to notice is I'm rooting all of these parts to that decoupler. And there's a reason for that. You can't attach the wings to the fairings they don't go on correctly especially if you're trying to use some kind of symmetry mode so we're gonna root them to the, the sorry the decoupler and the reason for that is is when or if we have to use the launch escape system which is basically that decoupler with that parachute to save the Kerbal from some kind of like you know wing blows off or something it will separate clean and the parachute will basically bring the cockpit down to the ground or the water or wherever it is and hopefully save the Kerbal's life. Um, it's a safety feature we're adding to these. But if you're to clip or sorry, root the wings to the cockpit and then use the move tool to drag them back, you would have basically floating wings coming down with you and more likely it'd get st stuck on the structural pieces and it'd make the cockpit too heavy and the parachute wouldn't work. So that's why we are actually rooting those to the decoupler, so everything gets separated. And the way he does his tanks and engines is the same same idea. He roots them to the decoupler, and then he enables crossfeed. That way he can put his tanks wherever he wants, and they'll still feed fuel to the engine. And that was my issue I was having. Um, I didn't realize that I had to enable crossfeed. I never really thought about it. I typically don't deal with crossfeed. So I've been, I've been actually attaching the engine to the tank and then clipping the tank in from the back. Um, it does give it some instability problems. Uh, 
They weren't too bad. This plane actually flew really awesome. You'll get to see that a little bit more later. We do launch a few of these this year. Now the cool thing about airplanes is you can recover them to the space plane hangar and reuse them if you don't destroy them. The one thing you gotta keep in mind though is the engine, for example, the XLR engine we're gonna be using has four ignitions. So if I launch this plane four times and use all four ignitions, I won't be able to reignite it the next flight. Also, we have test lights, so it can fail. So between launches, I would recommend, if, especially if you're gonna start doing planes like I am, you want to do an edit on the plane if you successfully recover it and swap out the engine and put a, a new one on there. Don't just like take it off, put it on, take it off, remove it and put a new one on there. And the reason is, is for that is one, it will allow you to have the ignitions back and two, it's better for reliability. I'm using a couple different uh, mods with test light, like uh, Scrapyard or Barn, I think it's Scrapyard. And Scrapyard actually like, indicates if the parts are new or old. And I'm using it with stage recovery. So let's say uh, a little bit later, if I start doing like boosters, for example, on my rockets, and I'm able to get it to where I can recover the stages using parachutes, which is pretty difficult to do in KSP because of the way the, the game works. But if I'm able to get some of those side tanks off and recover them, I can reuse them and it will make things cheaper. I eventually want to get to the point later in this game to where we will actually be able to do recoverable booster stages, uh, kind of like the Falcon 9. Uh, the problem is, is in order to do that successfully, you have to get it into pretty much orbit on the first stage. I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out the best way to go about that, or at least, you know, recover the main part of the vessel. Because once I get it into a stable orbit, I can switch over, let that, you know, whatever my probe or whatever I'm launching do its orbit and then recover the booster. I'm not 100% sure if it's possible or how it's gonna work, but it is something that I do want to eventually get to. That and I wanna, learn how to build airplanes so that's why we're here anyways um, now that that's complete we're gonna go ahead and do another sounding rocket contract because again we need funds we did get some funding from that contract we grabbed with the uh, artificial satellite but we need to build our launch pad so that was 70,000 which we'll be doing here shortly and we need to be able to build our aircraft and before I forget, in the Discord, I asked a few people if they wanted to be a part of the program. And I had two takers. So everyone say hello to Ziggy Kerman, one of our newest pilots, and OSA83, our other new pilot. Both of these pilots will be flying our aircrafts today. Um, Ziggy will actually be the first human to be in a craft. OSA will be going for a little bit of a different milestone and then we have a third flight which is going to be a surprise guest star which we will be introducing a little bit later we're just checking out some of the contracts and we're just kind of warping up until that plane is ready to go I did forget to start training these guys soon enough and took care of that later I wanted to try the air launch feature out, but I have to make some minor adjustments to the craft first. Anyways, without further ado, Ziggy Kerman on June 2nd, first man to fly anything in the space agency, and look at him soar. Again, our two main goals here were to break the 350 meters a second barrier, as well as finish that contract that wants us to be within 5,150 to 6,150 meters above the surface for at least three minutes. I do cut parts of this flight out mostly because I was in the air for a long time. Um, airplanes take a while. I was however very very excited about the gliding capabilities that this craft could do. We did keep it fairly low mostly for that contract but we hit that 5k achievement as well as we broke the sound barrier as well as wrapping up the other contract we had gotten for the X-Planes. 
Now, something unfortunate happens, and I do fix this, and there's a slight structural problem. And again, I'm not very good at flying, but I was coming down to kind of line up with the runway, and this happened. I'm pretty sure it's because I tried cutting a little too hard, and we were going fairly fast, and the aerodynamic drag on the wings just snapped it, which was unfortunate. But we have that launch escape system for a reason, and Ziggy was able to survive. As you can see, the wheel is clipped into this, and I do fix that later. Um, either way. As I sort of stated earlier, you can relaunch the same planes over and over again. So one of the important things is building a plane that can do multiple contracts, whether or not you do it all in one go or not, or building a plane you can make slight adjustments to to make it better, like upgrading the engine or maybe updating the wings or stuff like that, giving it a little more fuel. But because of the way I set this this first tank up, we were kind of limited on it. I'm going to go back to what Calvin does, and he does like smaller multiple tanks, which is a really, really great idea, which we do start kind of doing something similar to that later. Either way, we are going to go ahead and grab that contract to do the scientific satellite, now that we got it researching, and we're going to go ahead and upgrade our, or sorry, go ahead and start building our next launch pad. We still do have some sounding rocket contracts we need to work on, but we need to go ahead and make some adjustments to this plane. Firstly being, the drag chute I did not put on here. Unfortunately, this drag chute that we put on here does not function properly. It has an issue with thinking it's in the fairing even though it's not in the fairing. I think it's because we put it on the decoupler. Um, this does get fixed eventually, but not on this plane which was unfortunate. But that is something that's really important to think about or have prepared is a drag chute because sometimes you may not bleed off enough speed with just the brakes and that drag chute can be a literal lifesaver. Now, I really want to do an air launch because I've never used that function before and it's, it's super cool and it took me forever to figure out how it works. Um, you upgrade your air launch system in the R&D building, which I needed to do to air launch this plane properly. Um, there was a slight glitch in the build, which I don't figure out till way later. Uh, but the way I put one of my wings on the top, it, it thought it was taller than it really was. It was thinking it was like nine and a half meters high when it's really only like six and a half meters high. But either way... Um, that's why we do the air launch uh, the first time around because it wouldn't allow us to and it was because of that weird glitch. Uh, I spent like six hours trying to figure that out. Anyways, we went ahead and did another downrange contract because again, we still need to build up funds as we're doing this. We do have a decent amount of money, but we want to continue to generate money as we go. Um, there's not really much to talk about. You've seen the downrange. We just kind of let it blow itself up and we uh, called it good. Our main focus this year is getting the orbital rocket finalized and getting our astronauts up in the air. I did want to get a couple more launches done this year, but because of the first it, uh, plane get, getting destroyed, we had to rebuild it and our SPH isn't upgraded enough to build things fast. As we put most of our points into the R&D building and the VAB. Which, because you can reuse planes, I'm not going to put as much points in them as I have been for the other two. Just because I want to be able to launch the same plane multiple times. But, as I said before, we were just doing a couple of sounding rocket contracts in between. Just to, I mean, keep things going and keep making funds and we're not idling around there's not nothing building and once we get these next few contracts wrapped up we're gonna actually go ahead and build our orbital rocket as of right now all we're waiting for is the tech to finalize which is coming up here any moment now we won't be launching this rocket this year um, more or less because we don't have enough time in this year and the launch pad isn't finished yet so even rushing it won't matter. We are going to however grab 
one more of these sounding rocket contracts just to kind of get it going. We're gonna clean the launch pad up and we're gonna go ahead and warp forward a bit. And our second XO1H plane is just about to wrap up. So we're gonna get ready to go ahead and strap OSA83 into it and go ahead and air launch for the first time. Now, again, I've never used this air launch function, so the best way I can describe it is it literally starts your plane in air a certain distance away from the KSC, which you can set at a certain altitude and at a certain speed. The more you upgrade that air launch, the bigger the craft and the higher and faster you can go. Now, this whole flight was just to see how much altitude we can get and how much speed we can get. Unfortunately, we started getting a little too fast in the slightly thicker part of the atmosphere and things got a little spicy. So I cut the throttle just because I didn't want to kill OSA. Now, I do cut part of this video out because landing this thing took me a while. Bleeding off the speed. I, I had a lot of speed built up and by the time I got down low to the center, I was still going way too fast. Which you'll see right here, like I had to pull off a little bit because I'm still going. I, I want to touch down around 100 meters a second, if not less. And I was going way too quickly. So we basically just made a couple of, uh, basically like a figure eight maneuver around the KSC until I bled off my speed under 100 meters a second. And then we decided to come in for a landing. The unfortunate thing was I came at this at a really odd ball angle and I couldn't quite get it straight. We had to land. We ran at a speed, so I decided to land it in the grass next to the station. And as I look at it, any landing you walk away from is a good landing. So congratulations, OSA83. You were the first human to land an airplane on my series. And as you saw there, the drag shoe didn't work. It's still broken. I, it took me a while to figure that out, but yeah, it's, it's fickle. I don't know the best way to explain it. I ended up mounting it to a tail on a later craft and that works. Boards kind of going suit through to see what we can unlock next. Um, I want to get the re-entry stuff to unlock those re-entry contact contracts after we get orbital. So, Anyways, we just finished Orbital Rocket, so let's get to it. Now, if you guys watch Carnassus series, which probably everyone watching this does, um, he did a video on how to build your first Orbital Rocket. This is basically going to be that rocket. Um, I have my own slight little variation that I do to it, but it's essentially the same thing. I also unfortunately didn't have early solid rocket boosters so I had to use these spin motors which I'm hoping will be good enough because I usually use the separator motors to do my spin stability. And tests they seem to work pretty good but I would recommend using those separator motors and not using the ones I did purely because they don't have enough ump. I also probably should have waited till I had the next avionics unlock because it would have made this a lot easier to do. But because of the money I spent on the aircrafts and building airplanes, I couldn't upgrade my R&D enough to be able to unlock everything I wanted. I will uh, go back and actually edit this a little bit probably next year. Um, especially once we get the scientific rocket going and I'll probably change the avionics out if I have the money and can justify the cost because I'll have to retool it. But as I said, it's essentially the same thing that Carnassa builds. So if you guys want to see exactly how to build this rocket, I will link that in the description. It is a great guide. It's done in real time. It goes over all, over all the little details. We will be using the LR79 engine for the base booster. Because like I said a while ago, it is better than the LR-89 Carnassa. I'm kidding. And we're going to basically do the top spin stability AJ-10. Um, I do fade in and out here a little bit. For some reason, the, the top, the actual satellite piece, I made it a lot bigger than I was intending to. And I kept having this weird uh, Delta V issue. And I couldn't figure out why. 
And then I actually looked and I'm like, oh, I never fixed the satellite part, so it's super heavy. So you will see me cut in and out and make some small adjustments here and there, and that's just pretty much me running it through Crash and just verifying all the stages work. And I'm making sure my tanks are all filled up, making sure this thing is good to go before I launch it. Like you saw me add two more of those spin motors because the two I had on there wasn't quite enough um. But again, this works in Crash, so I'm banking on it will work in real life. I guess we'll know after I get the first rocket launched. I should, if I'm correct, I should have that tech unlocked after this first launch I do with this rocket because of how long it's going to take to get these built and onto the launch pad. And if that's the case, I'm going to go back and edit it and swap those out for separator motors when I add the Geiger counter to it. But this is me right here making the adjustments to it because I made it way too big. You saw how small I made it. It doesn't need to be that big. It only needs to last for a little bit of time. Um, I didn't even put science experiments on it. I'm going to add those when I do the Geiger counter setup. But I'm also going to add the other long-term experiment we have on there, which is spacing me right now. But we're going to add both of those on there. That way we can gather some scientific data from space. Once we unlock the re-entry heating, we'll go ahead and wrap up the rest of the data from the advanced bio unit, and we're going to complete that other contract that's still sitting there about that bio unit. But we have one more sounding rocket we need to launch, and it's actually going to be the last sounding rocket of the series, because as of next year, we're going to purely be focusing on orbital rocketry. So here we say goodbye to the very last Draco rocket we'll ever see. They served us well, they made us tons of fun, they were a great rocket overall and I couldn't have been happier. The year is coming to an end, it is pretty much late November, early December, but we do have one more surprise for you guys. Now I told you guys there'd be a guest star flying in this episode, and as soon as we make a couple of adjustments to this plane. Before we launch it, he uh, wanted to introduce him. I guess we're going to introduce him shortly after. I just wanted to give this a little more fuel and upgrade the engine to make sure it was replaced, make sure everything's all good to go. Um, I didn't check the balancing as well as I should have, but it still flew pretty phenomenally. This time we're going to aim to try to get 900 meters a second and get 25 altitudes with Carnassa the Space Boy from CSA or Carnassa Space Agency. He is our guest star today and he'll be the second launch of the X01H-2, December 1st, 1953. Everyone give him a warm round of applause. Now again, we're going to be going for altitude and more or less going for 25 kilometer altitude. Until we can put some RCS on these, I don't want to get them too high in the air, purely because there's no way to control them because the air is so thin. We will, however, be making a, a plane that's going to basically just be shot super high in the air. The goal is to escape the atmosphere, or at least skim the top of the atmosphere, and then go ahead and uh, bring them back down safely. Now, unfortunately, there was a slight mistake that happened during this flight, and I was trying to get a cool scenic shot, which you're about to see here in a second, and I had the UI down, and I didn't realize how fast we were coming in, and we got really, really hot. And, unfortunately, that meant the plane was going to break. Luckily, Carnassa didn't die. I would have felt terrible if the one time, or the first time he shows up on my channel, he would die. And then, of course, it got stuck to the unit, and it went spiraling out of control, so I'm pretty sure he'll never want to fly with us again. But we were able to save him. So, all in all, I'm going to call that a success. He's pretty much just going to parachute down into the water, and I've decided that the next few planes I'm going to start using, I'm going to have them go to different biomes to collect science, since I'm going to be focusing on planes a lot. Might as well use them to get some science. This is going to be our last flight of the year. We are pretty much at the end of the year in December. 
we're gonna go ahead and bring Carnassa the space boy home and pretty much just warp to the end and it looks like Carnassa wants to stay with us a little bit longer which is awesome uh, that's kind of why I wanted to get him into craft so they'd stay a little bit longer but I'm gonna go ahead and call that an episode we're gonna just pretty much warp to the end and yeah anyways thanks for stopping by I hope you guys enjoyed I enjoy making them check out the discord and to be honest I really don't know what to say at the end of videos so goodbye hope I see you guys in the year 1954